Okay, so let's talk about other electrical fixtures mounted in your underdecking ceiling system. Uh, refer to the section where we showed you how to bring power down for a ceiling fan. That would be the same technique that you'd use if you wanted to install, say, lighting or other electrical fixtures underneath your ceiling. Remember, the important thing is that you've got to keep the, the hole that the feed wire comes down through waterproof, and you do that by filling it with caulk as you're pulling your supply power line down. Um, but that, that techni same technique works for, for lights, you know, whether they're spotlights, track lights, surface mounted lights, uh, speakers. Anytime you're trying to bring power through the system, you want to do it in the rib. The one caution I do want to make is can lights. Can lights are problematic. You need to make a very large round hole in the panel to get a can light to sit in there and recess. As a result, you leave very little room for the water to flow down through that panel. It has to work its way around two sides of that cutout for the light. As a result, we don't recommend you cut out for can lights with the system. You know, surface amount of lighting is great, but, but we do not see a good way to waterproof when you install can lights. What I'm going to show you here is how to take a panel down in the middle of the system. Sometimes you need to get up in the system to do some kind of a repair to your deck, or maybe sometimes you just have a damaged panel that you want to replace. You don't have to start at one end and take them all down. You just reach up in between your carriers with this tool. This is what we call a zip tool. It's what we use to unhook vinyl siding. But you reach up in there and you grab the lip of the panel like this. You slide it over to your carrier and you pull this out of the carrier. So you're releasing this from the teeth of the carrier with this tool. So you do that at each carrier up and down the run. Once you've released it from the carrier on this side, you can reach up with your hand and it's a push and a down is what you're going to do is release this bead from the other hook of the carrier right here. Once this is released on all the carriers, then you can go ahead and slide it back, drop this end completely out, all the way back in the gutter, drop it out of the G-channel, and pull the panel out. Now I'm going to show you how to take this panel right here down. But in order to take this one down, I've got to unhook the one next to it first. So I reach up in here between the carriers, unhook that one, unhook that one. Now I can go over here and unhook the panel I'm actually going to remove. Now once I've unhooked it, I need to reach up inside and remember I'm going to push and then down. Okay. Same thing, I'm going to push into the bracket and then down. Now once that second hook is released, now I can slide it back over the gutter. Bring it down out of the G-channel and I'm free. Just the reverse of the installation process. Okay, so you put your last panel in, the job's finished, you're feeling pretty good. You step back and you look at things and you think, wow, looks great down here. There's one more thing we need to look for. We need to make sure that all our panels are lapped together the way they're supposed to be. This is how panels lock together properly. Sometimes you're going to get this, where the panel isn't quite lapped over the one next to it. The way you can see that is if you look down your system, and you look at your shadow lines, if you see any shadow lines that aren't consistent with the ones on either side of them, that's usually an indication that your panels aren't lapped well. So what you want to do is you go over there and check to make sure that you don't have this, but you have this. Now here's how you can tell when you've got a panel lap problem, when they're not overlapping each other properly. Look at how the spacing between the panel here, here, and here is different. When you have this wide of a space between your panels, that's an indication that one's not lapped over the next one like it should be. So here's the fix. Simply push up on the rib, get it aligned, and then squeeze them together until it pops in. See how the spacing evens out? And that's how you know that you've got your panels lapped.
One of the frequently asked questions I get when I'm doing installation seminars is what about ice? Is ice going to form in my underdeck system? And my answer to that is that yes it will if there's an artificial source of heat. The reason why ice in gutters is a problem is because you're getting melting snow off the roof due to heat loss that's causing the melt snow to melt and refreeze in the gutter when it gets out to the edge. Unless there's an artificial source of heat to melt the snow on the top of your deck, it's not going to fall through and refreeze on the bottom of your deck. However, if you get situations like dryer vents, outdoor heaters, hot tubs, now you do have a source of heat that can radiate up, cause the snow to melt, and refreeze in the deck. It's, it's not a problem. Our system's been designed to hold ice, and let me explain to you how. Here's a little piece of carrier. Here's my panel. I lock it in. Now as you can see, as this fills up with ice, eventually the ice is going to freeze around these teeth in my carrier. Once that happens, all the weight of that ice is being taken by the carrier, not the panel. Until that time, the panel itself, the more weight that goes in it, the tighter it grabs the carrier. As you push down on the panel, the sides close in and grab the carrier tighter. So ice buildup in the system is not an issue. Dryer vents produce warm, moist air. What we don't want to do is have that warm, moist air trapped between our underdeck ceiling and the deck boards above. What you're going to see often is the dryer vent is vented in the ledger of the deck. Typically when a basement has a finished ceiling, that dryer piping is above the ceiling of the basement, which is going to cause it to line right up with the ledger of the deck. So you'll see the dryer vent grill right there in the ledger. We don't want that air just dumped in between our ceiling and our decking, so what we're going to do is extend the pipe that that warm, moist air travels through all the way down the joist bay to the outside of the deck, and we're going to reinstall the grill at the end of the pipe so all that warm air is piped through the joist bay and, and dropped into the outside where it can dissipate. Columns are another uh, installation situation that you may run into. As you can see here, I have a column that's out at the end of my system. But every once in a while you're going to see a deck built with a column like that over here going right up through the middle of where my system's going to be. So we've come up with a way to run our system around that column and not have it leak. And it's really quite simple. What we're going to do is we're going to tent flash uphill from that column penetration. And what I mean by that is, is we'll take trim coil and we'll bend it into a V like we did when we pan flashed the cantilever, but we're going to attach it upside down to the bottom of a joist and what that'll do is it'll act like a little roof shed that will divert water from one side to the other so that the water coming between the deck there will go to one full panel on either side of the panels that have been cut out for the column to go through. The system really cleans itself. There's really no required maintenance to it. Uh, any amount of debris that's going to fall between your deck boards is going to be small enough that will also wash down the gutter and the downspout. So there is no maintenance required. However, if you, if you want to flush your system out, you have the option of either taking a garden hose or even a pressure washer and shooting water down between your deck boards and flushing the panels out that way. And all that water will then again run down your gutter and down your downspout, but that's not a requirement. I also want to mention pressure washers because a lot of people will want to pressure wash their deck after the system's been installed. And the only, the only uh, caution I would say is that because that water is under pressure and it shoots through your between your deck boards and hits the panels and projects, there may be some dripping in your system after a pressure wash. However, that's only because the water is under pressure and it's being projected down and up over the joints between the panels.